The House of Representatives has declared a state of emergency against rape and violence against women in the country. Adopting a motion sponsored by Mr. Rotumi Agunsoye at the plenary presided by Speaker Femik Bajabea Miller, the House also condemned incidences of police brutality in both the country and far away the United States leading to the cold-blooded murder of George Floyd. In effect, the House urged the Inspector General of Police, the IGP, Mr. Mohamed Adamu, to immediately cause investigations into the unfortunate case of Uwa Omozua, Tina Ezekwe, the reported rape of a minor in Jigawa State, as well as all other reported cases of violence against women, with a beat to bring in the criminals to justice. Bringing us, joining us live is Osai Ojigo, Country Director, Amnesty International, Nigeria. Thank you, Osai, for joining us on the news. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning to you. In the last few weeks, Nigeria has recorded cases of rape and death of rape victims in the hands of their culprits in, in numbers. This has sparked off nationwide protests with different white groups demanding for justice for all rape victims as well as demanding stiffer penalties for raping Nigeria. Now, Amnesty International has added its voice by calling for a state of emergency to be declared on rape issues. Um, what is your take on all of what is happening and what has been happening in the country? I think it's very disturbing uh, that we're having these frequent cases of rape on a daily basis and it's occurring throughout the entire country. So whether it's the north, the central or the south, you are finding very horrific cases, gang rapes. And it's in response to this that people are now gathering themselves, mobilizing in order to show our condemnation of these acts, but most importantly, to get the government to act. We need them to take these cases of rape seriously. Now, why is your organization asking that a state of emergency be declared on this matter? Because it's becoming too rampant, and also it shows that because the government has not been handling cases of rape in an efficient and effective manner, it's just getting worse. And if we don't tackle it now, nowhere will be safe for any woman, any girl. If you notice all the cases that have come up um, this week, it's either the, the woman was attacked um, at home or uh, the case of Uwa in a church premises. How can we be sure that everywhere in Nigeria is safe? So until every woman and girl feels safe, the country needs to stand up to ensure that perpetrators of this crime are brought to justice. The police needs to top up whatever efforts they are doing. The government needs to allocate more resources to the police in order to find these killers, these rapists, and ensure that they are brought to justice. Now, many are calling for even stiffer penalties for culprits. What did you say? I think the most important thing is to deter the crime from occurring in the first place. As much as we want everyone who has been involved in this crime to be convicted, I think the first point of call is for government to put efforts into prevention. And that means to make it harder for rapists and criminals to get, um, to get away with this. And how can this happen is if the justice system is able to respond adequately and quickly. We believe that what is happening now is impunity. In terms of stiffer penalties, stiffer penalties will only work if you're able to catch the culprits. We've had the, the, the laws on rape in the books for many years. It's in our criminal code, in our penal code. The Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act also clearly defines what rape is and what needs to be done if perpetrators are caught. But despite all of this, we have not made any progress. So our, our call will be get the culprits, charge them to court based on the laws that we have, and ensure that you provide support for victims, because sometimes we forget the victims in all of this. And we really want the government to step up and ensure that everyone who is involved in this case is given the resources they need in order to do their job, and that victims and their families are supported emotionally, um, psychologically, and physically, and to protect them as well, because quite a number of them are getting threats from this alleged um, rapist, and there's nothing that is being done to protect them. Now, Mrs. Ojigo, many people will argue the fact that this is like searching for a needle in a haystack where you have people who should be passing the law, some of them uh, marrying to children who are underage, um, talking about the child bride, and minors being, being married, that this, in, in a way, it also constitutes rape. Now, how do you think effectively legislation can make this work? The first thing we need to do is to amend our constitution. 
because within the constitution, even though we recognize that a child is anyone up, um, 18 and above, the constitution currently permits women who are married and below the age of 18 to be considered as adults. That is wrong. It's a campaign that um, activists and women's groups have been challenging for many years. I think this is an opportunity for us to correct that. Also, it's important that the country is in alliance with, um, is in alignment with international standards, which says that a child is anyone below 18. So children should not be getting married. And that should be something we all should stand up um, to support. It doesn't matter whether you're in the North or in the South, and you cannot use religion or culture to justify this behavior. Because if you look at some of the cases that have come up this week as well, some of them involve very young children who have been viciously attacked and who have going to have to live with that trauma for a very long time. We cannot allow that to happen to the future of this country. There's been the perpetual culture of shaming and blaming the victims of rape most of the time. And there's so much call asking people to come out and speak out if they've been victims of um, such, such an act. And most times, nothing is heard about the perpetrators of this crime. Now, by way of deterrent, like visible deterrent, what would you recommend? Last year, um, the National Sex Offenders Register was formally launched. So this is housed in Abuja, but the purpose of the register is to ensure that anyone who has been suspected or convicted of rape or sexual offenses gets into that register. The way it works is convicts will be publicly named on the register and people can have access to their names. It will have implications to them in terms of work or access to sensitive work regarding um, children or health care or things like that. But what makes this sex offenders register unique is that even if someone is suspected and is not convicted, it is noted in a special part in the register. The idea is that we're beginning to see that there's a pattern of repeat offending going on in the country. And it will serve as a deterrence to ensure that people are acting with the highest standard expected of everyone and that you're respecting people's human rights. We believe naming and shaming would go a long way to reduce and deter people from acting in this manner. And we also want to call on people. If you see something, you hear something a lot. Support victims and their families. Many people are willing to come out and share, but they feel left down when people tell them, oh, leave it to God, or step back, or do something else with your life, because the trauma is real. We are beginning to document and see the effect of this incident on the victims. We cannot allow people to get away with it. So we want justice to take its course, but most importantly, we want people to know that if you are suspected because of your behavior or proximity, you cannot come on air or come anywhere and say, oh, it was my sister, or I was just playing with her. It is wrong, it is wrong. And that Nigeria has zero tolerance for this sort of sexual violence because it not only impacts on us as a people, it impacts on the entire life that everyone is supposed to live. We're supposed to live a life free of fear. We're supposed to live a life of dignity. Osai Ojigo, it's been a pleasure having you on the news. Thank you for your time. Thank you, too.